cut him in pieces. And Isaac, you know, in short, and Isaac, you know, found all the pieces and uh, brought them back to the Ozarian temple and, and bandaged the pieces back together, creating the first mummy. And then it says, the Book of the Dead, the Egyptian Book of the Dead says that she, with her magic, put life back in Osiris' body. Well, if she was able to do that, she most likely did it with what information was on these walls. The information that on, is on these walls might be a hint to how she was able to do this. And it became clear to me that it must have something to do with them knowing about the foundation of the geometry of space. So I was looking at it carefully because you know how I had this kind of illumination on the temple in South in in Mexico. Well, when you start examining other temples around the world, you realize that these other temples have a lot in common. That is, they're all very very difficult to explain <laughs> with vine ropes, copper tools, no pulley, and so on. One Egyptologist, the director of the Giza, Pla the Giza Plateau said, there is not one grain of evidence of any advanced civilization ever having been in Egypt prior to the Egyptian. And I thought that was one of the most accurate statements I ever heard from an archaeologist. Because if you're looking for grains of evidence of sand, you will miss it. If you're looking, if you got your head in the sand, you will miss it. But if you look up from the sand and stop looking for grains of evidence, you will see millions of tons of rocks right in front of your eyes giving you some pretty damn good evidence. Okay? The Grand Pyramid of Giza is made of 2,300,000 stones. 2,300,000 stones. It stands at 481 feet of altitude. Its base is 13 square feet, uh, 13 square ac acres, 13 square acres, that is extremely large. When you take survey picture, satellite picture of the apex of the Grand Pyramid at Giza, it is one quarter of an inch off the center of the base, that's 13 square acres. 13 acres square. One quarter of an inch off center. That's after placing 2,300,000 stones that you have cut with copper tools. <laughs> yeah, you need some pretty good moonshine to do that one. <laughs> But I guarantee you, that is extremely difficult to reproduce. In fact, there is no way engineering companies on this planet could ever reproduce that. Even with all of our modern technology, if we give them billions and billions of dollars, they couldn't come up with anything like that. Because if you cut, if you divide a quarter of an inch error by 2,300,000 stone, the accuracy at which you're placing these stones is outrageous. And we can't do anything like that. 
our most accurate buildings like um, telescopes are not that accurate. They're not even close to having that kind of accuracy. Go ahead. So you could say we've just barely come out of the dark ages. Basically, or we got into the dark ages. <laughs> because we, it seems that there was people that were doing a heck of a lot better than us. Sorry. <laughs> Um, so what I'm, when I was looking at this, I'm like, wait a minute, that doesn't happen that way. If you, if, you know, why is it that we think, you know, that this is taught as facts to children in schools every day, that the pyramids were built by people pulling on vine ropes? <laughs> and you know why? Because in the 1800s, a bunch of English archaeologists showed up in Egypt and that's the only thing they could come up with and because they had PhDs and they were very respected archaeologists since then everybody is repeating the same thing and somehow a theory that's completely unproven became a fact in fact you will not get a PhD in archaeology if you say anything else about the pyramids. I guarantee you that. You cannot get a PhD in archaeology by saying the pyramids were built by little green man. <laughs> this is one of the problems with education. A whole bunch of people repeating at what they've all been taught doesn't advance the field very rapidly. Because everybody is repeating the same thing, you're not going anywhere. So, uh, you know, but they, these archaeologists never actually, you know, I, I, I know they're not mathematicians, but this is simple mathematics, okay? You take the number of stone, they tell you that the pyramids had to be built in 20 years, okay? So that the dynastic Egypt worked. And then you calculate how fast they had to put the stones in. At, at seven days a week, 10 hours a day, 365 days a year, for 20 years, they had to place the stone every two minutes to finish the pyramid on time. With that level of accuracy. Never mind. But then the archaeologists say, no, oh no, those were farmers. They could only build the pyramids during the time of the flood of the Nile when they couldn't work in the fields. Three months out of the year. <laughs> See, when they had that three months vacation, hey, let's all go and build a huge pyramid. <laughs> so they went out there and built pyramids three months out of the year. You redo your calculation. Now they have to place a rock every two seconds to make it in 20 years so that really doesn't work um, because it's not like you can take these huge rocks an average two tons some of them up to 40 tons rock like in the king's chamber there's a hundred slab of 40 ton pink granite rock okay these things at 135 feet of elevation in the pyramid it's not like you go, hey, Joe, catch this one. Hey, Joe, catch this one. You know? And the other guy on the other end is like putting them in. You can't do that. And it doesn't matter if you got 100,000 people. You still can't do it. And, if, and, and, you know, they tell you they did that by rolling the rocks on logs. Well, they might have not noticed but these pyramids are in the middle of a desert. <laughs> you need a lot of logs to move 2,300,000 stone. Where did the wood come from? When you ask them that, they say, oh, they imported it from Europe. <laughs> I see. <laughs> Was this 
like some catalog, you know, 1-800 ordering? Because, like, as far as I know, the Egyptian didn't, like, you know, easily navigate into Europe, cut millions of logs they would have needed, and brought them back. There's no evidence of that. So, uh, but, but even more fundamental, I'll ask you, you know, even more fundamental, the fundamental axioms of archaeology is that you observe and uh, decode the remains of a civilization to understand its morse, morses and its, its, you know, it, its activities and all this, right? 